hey guys welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be doing a look with the um chanel, uh, chanel quad that i had hauled earlier this year it's called eclat et magnetique no eclat enig magnetique enigma i don't know who knows it's french it's french it's this one i'll let you all read it I'm gonna wait till the camera focuses. This quad doesn't have a number. It actually came out during, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, a cruise collection. And I never, um, I haven't pulled out the quad until now because it just, I don't know, it didn't seem like a spring, summer quad to me. This, to me, screams fall vibes all day, every day. And so I'm just going to go ahead and create a look with this. This is available at um, Chanel.com. And I believe at some department stores, they still have this quad in stock. You might want to call your local Bloomingdale's, Neiman Marcus, Nordstrom, um, because they might still have some in stock at the store and you can go ahead and pick it up. And so let's get started. The I just want to let you guys know that I already put foundation on my face, I moisturized, I primed, the whole nine. And so we're just going to pick up my hair. The foundation I used for this look was the Ultra Latent Chanel Foundation. You guys know I love this. This is what I've been um, using for the past couple of weeks. Um... I've been rotating this one and velvet. I am BD31, if you guys wanted to know what color I was in this foundation. The setting powder I use is the Too Faced Peach Perfect uh, setting powder. I do not know why this camera is giving me issues. This color is... This is their translucent one because these now come in shades, I believe. Then I went ahead and the bronzer I used was my Chanel um, Le Beige's Healthy Glow Sheer Powder. And this is in number 30. It is very well loved. As you can see, this is the bronzer that I've been using lately. I like it because it's very, very subtle. Even if you use a heavy hand, you really got to pound it on. This is not really... Um, advertised as a bronzer but that's what I use it for the my actual color in that powder would be number 20 so I just sh got a shade you know above that and started using it as my bronzer and then for my blush I um, used my favorite Chanel blush number 280 golden Sun as you can see this is also very well loved <laughs> I just love the way that this blends so well with bronzer. It's ridiculous. And then as highlight, I used the Camellia de Chanel Illuminating Powder. This actually I hauled, I believe, in 2018 or 2017. I cannot remember quite well when this aired at work when this was launched this came in a limited edition red packaging i know that i did an unboxing uh for this powder on my channel and so i started to use this this is a highlighter obviously it's beautiful it has the camellia embossed in it and this is a highlighter that why why is the square going everywhere so frustrating okay so this powder is a highlighter and I really only use this during the holidays because it's that kind of highlight. It's very sparkly, very silvery highlight and it just screams to me holidays. So when November hits, I already have this powder out and then usually by January, I took it back into the drawer. Unfortunately, I do not see this available for purchase on the Chanel website anymore. They do have, though, the one that came out this year, which is like the same type of packaging, but instead of having the camellia on the top, it has the lion. 
That color looks very similar to this one, so I would try that one out. Anywho, let's get started. So I've already primed my eyes with, with the Chanel primer, which by the way, I do not recommend you guys buy because it is one of the worst primers I've ever tried and I continue to use it because I bought it in a set and I can't return it. And so I'm not gonna just throw away money, I'm just gonna have to live with it until I'm done using it. But basically the reason I don't like it is because it doesn't dry down um, completely and so it starts to create, it's very hard for me to um, start using like my eyeshadows on top of it. As you can see, the white shade is the shade I start with and it has already a weird like film over it. Let me just get closer so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. But yeah, I, I would not purchase the Chanel primer. I definitely Bare Minerals has a very good eyeshadow primer, which is usually what I use. Too Faced has a really good one. So anyways, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a shadow brush. This is from It Cosmetics. And it's just a regular shadow brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the white shade in the palette and I'm going to put this all over my lid all the way to the brow bone. Anywho, not only does it not dry down the primer but it actually lifts um, whatever you know concealer or whatnot you put on your eyes. Yes, they really gotta, Chanel really has to reformulate that. I did not appreciate it but there's worse things in life, right? All right, so you're just gonna put this all over the lid, all the way to the brow bone. And you're gonna build this up according to your skin tone. I gotta do like two and a half um, layers and that's because I don't have a good primer on. But if you have a good primer on, you won't have this issue. So just until you have a nice little even a uh, layer of shadow as you can see and I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the next side Anyways yesterday, I spent all day baking gingerbread cookies I don't know how to bake and so tell me how I ended up picking the hardest Cookie recipe to make they came out good. Thank God but they're not the easiest to bake and they take really long because you have to chill the dough for like three to four hours. So lesson learned, I chilled my dough the night before and then the next morning I was able to roll it out and bake those puppies. Okay, so once you have an even layer on your skin, you're gonna go in with a shadow brush and I'm gonna reach behind here and just grab one of my brushes because the one that I have here may have a little bit of shadow on it so I'm gonna save it for the end so just go in with a any crease brush that you may have I am a sucker for multitasking brushes okay so you're gonna see what I mean in a moment I'm gonna go into this brown shade right here and I'm gonna use this as the transition shade. These colors are very pigmented. I was very, very happy with that. So just put this all over the crease, really blend it out. And then you're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Anyways, what are your favorite things to bake during the holidays? For me, it's gingerbread cookies. I really like gingerbread cookies and they're so hard to find. Um, I no, no one really makes them and Publix doesn't sell them. And so I said, whatever, I'm just gonna make my own. They ended up coming out so good. I really love it. I'm gonna have to bake them again before Christmas time. Once you have your transition shade down, I'm gonna close my eyes so you guys can see what I'm talking about. I'm then gonna use the same brush 
to go into the red shade in the quad, which is this one right here. And I'm gonna use the same brush. So the kind of look that I'm gonna create here, just so that we have a little bit of information as we start to build this up, is how to use this quad for an everyday look, okay? So you're gonna use a little bit of that red shade and you're gonna, again, blend that all over the crease as I'm doing. I'm all about being able to use my quads, any quad that I buy, for an everyday look because they cost a lot of money and, you know, I don't want to have them just sitting in a drawer for whenever I go out, you know, to party at night, which I don't do often. So, I know, I'm a boring individual. All right, so once you have put that red shade on, as you can see, there's like an even layer there. Uh, you're then gonna go in with a um, crease brush, but I'm, because of the way that I'm gonna apply this, try to find a crease brush that's, that's a bit thinner, a bit smaller. See, the crease brush I was using before was much larger. Okay, so try to find something a little bit thinner. If you are already using, if your crease brush already looks like this and that's what you've been using, you can use that same brush for all three shades, okay? You don't have to change it out. I had to uh, change it out just because I kind of wanted you guys to see the progression of color because um, I use this one for the dark shade and I kind of wanted you guys to see, you know, the progression of color. Anyway, then I'm gonna go in with a light hand, just a little bit, of this like charcoal uh, gray black shade right here. And I'm going to just tap my brush in there slightly. I haven't even picked up a lot. And you're just gonna blend that on the outside of the crease. See? And it just starts to even out and then when you're done blending that out on the outside, drag it in to the rest of the crease. And you're gonna do the same thing to the other side. So once you're done blending and, you know, just setting that color down at the end, you're gonna go ahead and drag it in to the rest of the eye. All right. And once you're done doing that, you're gonna go back with the same eyeshadow brush you use to apply the white shade and you're gonna go ahead and soften out the edges, okay? You can use whatever's left on the brush, which is what I do. Just kind of soften up the edges, clean it up a little bit on the sides. I'm sorry, was that? That was in the middle, wasn't it? Sorry. <laughs> but if you want to go back in and grab a little bit of the eyeshadow, you can. And then you just put it all over the brow bone as if you're highlighting almost. I always do the sweeping motion because I like to sweep up any like residue that I may have had for the shadow. Then you guys know that usually eyeshadows come with like two different like little brushes, okay, that no one ever uses. Well, I found a use for it. So grab your little like spongy um, brush and you're gonna dip that into that black shade as you can see, I already have it on the brush. And you're just going to use this as eyeliner. And you're gonna just gently put that on just the outer corner of your eye. Very light hand with this because this color is very pigmented. So just a light hand. 
and I'm using the tip of the brush, okay? Just the tip of that. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other side, to the other side. Very, very gentle as I'm with sweeping motions. Okay, so just to the outer corners. I'm gonna fix this side because I hardly got any product on there. Okay, so right now this looks a little bit weird. The next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is we are going to grab a clean brush and we're gonna sweep away any fallout that may have happened. Next, I'm gonna go in with my NARS uh, black eyeliner and I'm going to need to use this mirror that I have here. <laughs> you guys know I struggle with the eyeliner. Nothing's changed on this channel. But anywho, sorry that this is in the way, but I'm kind of blind too, so. Yes, uh, hold it down and just, you're only gonna apply eyeliner to half of the eye, which is the only area you apply that black shade to, okay? And this is gonna kind of give you that effect, like if it's opening up your eye. Okay, I just wanna make sure. Yep, I'm sorry about the lighting. <laughs> the sun is having a good old time this afternoon. Which is good because yesterday was raining all day and I couldn't film. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other eye. I stretch out my eyelid just because it's the only way that I can really have control over what I'm doing. All right. So you just apply the black eyeliner to half of the eye. Next, I'm gonna go in with the Chanel um, Intense Eye Pencil in number 69. And this is just a, a flesh colored tone eyeliner and I'm gonna apply that to the waterline on the bottom. I know this looks weird, sort of creepy but bear with me. Okay. I don't think, I don't necessarily think that this is a necessary step, but for some reason I really like the way it looks with the eyeshadow. Next, I'm gonna go in with my Benefit Gimme Brow in number four, and I'm gonna give some life to my eyebrows that have been washed out. And like I said, you tailor this look to, let me use this because it's just easier. You tailor this to, you know, your needs. So if you don't need to put on any Gimme Brow, you can skip this step. I'm just doing it because this is how I usually do my makeup every day. And this is a look that I've been using now uh, for the holidays. And I thought you guys would enjoy it. But yeah, you guys can just skip this step and move on to whatever it is that you do next. So this is just to give my eyebrows a little bit of color. They tend to get a little bit washed out especially when I use like white sort of white based eyeshadows so we're just gonna comb them so they stay in place give give them a little bit of color next I'm gonna go in with my Lancome intensive uh, black um, mascara this is the hypnos drama and I'm just gonna apply a nice one layer coat on my eyelashes. This is a good mascara. I, I've been enjoying it. This was a sample I got. And 
this was a good sample. There's a lot of product in here and I've been using it all through the month of um, is it November, mid-November till now. And I can say I've really, really enjoyed this mascara. Stays on all day, spreads out my lashes. The brush on this is a little weird because it's curved in a, in a unique way. That's, that's the term I'm gonna use, unique. I'll show it to you now. But see, it's like, it's like curved. There's like, there's like a dip at the end. Very interesting. So I'm gonna go and start applying mascara to my other eye. This is a step that takes me the longest, you guys know, because I'm super picky about it. I don't like my lashes to clump. It just, it feels weird on my eye. And I don't wear false lashes because I can't handle it. It feels so weird. I just wanna rip them out the entire time or I just wanna scratch my eyes. I don't know, I, I can't do false lashes. If you have the same problem, let me know because I just, I can't. It's so hard, it's so hard for me. All right, so once you've applied your mascara, we can start talking about lips. And because this is a fall look and you know, it's a little bit, you know, cash, a little bit dark, you, I don't want to go in with a bold lip because this is an everyday look. So I'm going to go in with a nude shade. It could be any nude shade you want. The one that I'm going to use is one of my favorites from Chanel. And it is the Rouge Allure Le Rouge Intense uh, Lipstick in number 174, Rouge Angelique. And I'm going to go ahead. It's a nude shade. And I'm going to go ahead and apply this all over my lips. Let me just line the bottom. Get a good even shade on there. Okay. That completes this look. Oh no it doesn't. I almost forgot. I'm gonna go in with my Guerlain um, elect Meteorites in Electric Pearl. This was the um, meteorites that came out fall of last year and i'm just gonna dust this all over my face mm, it smells so good i only apply it to my jawline and my forehead because i'm oily so i don't want to apply anything to my t-zone anyways now this completes the look let me let me fix my hair so I was looking a little bit psycho chic there for a moment. Let me move this mirror out of the way. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me show you what the finished product looks like. But it's a really nice palette. If you were thinking of purchasing it, go ahead and order it on Chanel.com. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time, guys. Bye.